Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. You're watching Alaska Weather with us on this November the 12th. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. Hopefully you had a good weekend. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information, and you can always do that easily by calling the Alaska Weather Information Line 1-800-472-0391. Find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska or on your mobile or uh, cell device, mobile.weather.gov. It's an easy, slick, quick, and easy way to put that information on a low bandwidth connection onto your home screen. So load that up. It is a web page, not an app, but share that forecast that you find to your home screen and it'll load up even faster the next time. David.Snyder is how you find me at NOAA.gov. Simply send me an email. I'd love to see the pictures of what it looks like in your village. And if you ever have weather reports, make sure you contact your local weather forecast office in Fairbanks, Juneau, or here in Anchorage. Here's a look at what's going on tonight. Not a whole lot going on in southeast. There are some areas of uh, winds that will be coming up in the next day or so, but for right now, no warnings, watches, or advisories for southeast. In south central, we are on the leading edge of a weather change, and as we head into tomorrow, a uh, winter storm watch will begin. A uh, blizzard warning uh, will start up for Thompson Pass, and a winter weather advisory uh, will go into effect for the Copper River Valley. Now, let's start with the uh, Matanuska and the Anchorage area, Matanuska Borough and the um, Anchorage area, Matanuska Valley, I should say, in the Anchorage area. Uh, we are looking at a winter storm watch for freezing rain. Uh, so that does include all the way from the Hay Flats up to uh, the Matanuska Valley and then southward to uh, just about just south of Girdwood. And what we're watching for is overrunning, that warm and wet air coming up over top cold and drier air. If it rains through that, it freezes on contact and that makes a really slick situation for roads, for sidewalks, and uh, just in general kind of yuck. Um, as we move into the Copper River Valley, it looks like there's going to be enough snow and probably some wind. That visibility will be reduced, uh, so the main threat would be uh, mostly snow in this case. And then for the Thompson Pass area, of course, wind and snow. And it looks like uh, conditions could be kind of tricky there as we get into uh, Thursday, Thursday night, and onward into Friday. North of that, everything that you see around the Deltana and Tanana Flats region and the eastern Alaska range is snow and wind. Uh, that primarily looks, primarily looks to be the main issue is going to be a snow and wind combination for the interior. But most of the changes that we're going to see here in South Central really begin to shape up as we head into Wednesday night and onward into Thursday. Thursday itself around the Anchorage area is not going to be very nice, it looks like, no matter how you cut it, even if, even if it is not freezing rain, even if it is rain and snow or just all snow. Uh, it's going to be very close along that line. So plan for some changes and uh, be prepared for maybe some slow going travel wise, so whether you're trying to fly in or out or whether you're trying to drive in or drive out. As we look at the interior, uh, Middle Tanana Valley and the Deltana and Tanana Flats region also looking at a winter weather advisory. Uh, gusts to 40 miles per hour around the Middle Tanana Valley, maybe not as windy in town, uh, gusts to about 25 or what the folks are talking about right now. Uh, this is going to start up as we head into uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning I should say, and last all the way through Friday morning. So a lot of heads up on this one. Uh, the lower Koyukuk Valley to the middle Yukon Valley. Also expecting winter weather advisory there for areas of wind and snow. Uh, the strong wind gusts there, certainly around the Deltana and Tanana Flats region, gusts to 60 miles per hour, uh, I'm sorry, 40 miles per hour possible, with about four to seven inches, three to five inches of snow around the Fairbanks area. Your snow will start on Thursday. The red areas, of course, are warnings, and those are winter storm warnings in this case from the upper Koyukuk all the way to the Yukon Flats in the central interior, uh, the upper Tanana Valley, and uh, the eastern Alaska Range all looking at about two to six inches in general. That's the lower end. On the higher end, though, we're expecting that places like the upper Tanana Valley and the eastern Alaska range, probably on the order of about four to 12 for the upper Tanana and about six to 13 inches for the eastern Alaska range. All of these areas, though, have the potential to have some high winds with there, especially over the mountain passes. So if you're driving on the Richardson, the Steese, the Elliott, and you're going over a mountain pass, plan on those conditions to be a little bit more gnarly than they have been in a while. So be extra careful out there. Plan accordingly. And uh, if you don't have to go, this is the kind of weather that maybe you should just sit this one out. Let it settle down. Let the road crews get to work. And they do a great job. Let them do it and get out of their way and be safe and tell us about it the next day. Out across the west, we have a high wind warning also in effect. St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait Coast. Uh, you're looking at some strong easterly winds here, and uh, while you'll have sustained winds around the 40 mile an hour range, it's the gust to 60 miles per hour that we're going to worry about. So the west coast there and St. Lawrence Island under a high wind warning 
Again, that'll go until Friday morning. Uh, it looks like uh, you could see gusts to 60 miles an hour there. So a whole lot going on and a whole lot of wind. You'll see that uh, showing up on the turbulence map here on the aviation side. But here's what's going on. A hurricane force low there south of the Schumigans and south of Unalaska and Nudge Harbor is creeping northward. All of this has a lot of moisture working north. It's eventually going to rain in southeast and rain across the Gulf Coast and rain across southwest. But on top of that, we have a lot of cold air descending southward around 1,040 millibar high is pushing southward into this, and it's going to move underneath this low. So all that wet weather is moving up on top. The cold dry air is underneath. It's a really good situation to promote the opportunity of freezing rain. It's not what you want to see. The good news is folks down in southwest last week that really got hammered with this, that threat's going to push southward this time. And the better news is that for folks around Dillingham, where the threat may be lining up, Right now, it looks like your window of opportunity for freezing rain is much shorter than what we saw in Southwest last week, and it doesn't look to be as intense. Unfortunately, some of that threat is working its way into South Central. Now, again, it doesn't look like we're going to see the days upon days of freezing rain, but uh, freezing rain on major thoroughfares, not what you want to see when you're driving around back and forth uh, many, many miles. So be extra careful and plan ahead, whether you're watching from Anchorage, Wasilla, Palmer, Chickaloon, or anywhere along the Glen Highway, and certainly in the interior. If you've got travel plans mid to late week, you want to consider that carefully because uh, there will be snow, there will be wind, and visibility is not going to be uh, very good. So, Hurricane Force Low in the south, that's 946 millibars. High pressure up north, creating areas of fog and some flurries there, but the main push is going to be slowly working that leading edge of colder air southward as we head through tonight. There's a weak area of low pressure across the northern Gulf. That's 995 millibars. It's slopping in some rain and some fog into parts of southeast. Uh, looks like we've got another surge of moisture working out ahead of this. This is the triple point where the cold, the warm, and kind of that mixed up overrunning air is working through. And then we have uh, that area of rain across the Alaska Peninsula and the central and eastern chain. Out west, warmer air is already pushing westward across the western chain because there's so much warm air wrapped up into the system out there leading the western edge of that storm. As we head into tonight, then, <clears throat> rain will be mo moving into the Gulf Coast. It looks like that blizzard warning will start up around the Thompson Pass area. Watch for areas of snow and blowing snow for the higher terrain. Rainfall across southeast starts up at 956 millibar low at this point. Rain all the way across the Alaska Peninsula through the central chain. And uh, again, the tight packing of these pressure lines, these lines of constant pressure called isobars, that simply means there's going to be a lot of wind moving through all of the normal places there. So if you're already in a windy prone spot, you know it's going to pick up tonight. Yeah, the crossed arrows here mean the chance for blowing snow. That reduces visibility without snow falling from a cloud. Areas of light snow across the north slope. And again, in this zone here, especially north of the Yukon Valley to the Brooks Range, plan on turbulent weather. The turbulence is going to be uh, on the higher side for sure as we wrap up the week. Low pressure tomorrow, 962 millibars, pushing that front north of Kodiak Island into Homer, into southwest. And we've got rain to start in southwest, but there's going to be a very slender area where we have the opportunity of freezing rain. Hopefully that doesn't last very long at this point. For South Central, the weather will gradually start to go for the worse as we get into the afternoon and evening hours. Most of the day should be okay. Rainfall in southeast and then snow across the Copper River Valley. Blowing uh, conditions across the interior. It's going to be a blustery day for the interior for sure. And then as we get into Thursday, you can see snow flies across the interior. Winter storm warnings will be in effect for a lot of places. Uh, mountain passes not looking so good at this point. Low pressure is down to 966 millibars. This would be a day where we could still see freezing rain and mixed precipitation around the Anchorage and the Matanuska area. Better chance of snow by Thursday, but leading up to it could be freezing rain. And any mixed precipitation across southwest should be minor at this point, leaning over towards snow in southwest. And rain showers across southeast, uh, Haines, Skagway probably looking at some light snow. And then rainfall across the uh, Gulf Coast with uh, rain and snow across the northwest. Now, what about temperatures? We'll take a quick peek at Wednesday. 30s in the north around Haines and Skagway, 40s south of that. In fact, pushing 50 degrees around Ketchikan and Annette. 30s around the Prince William Sound region, 28 around Kenai, minus 3 as you get up toward Healy. About the same there for Fairbanks overnight tonight. Cool, dry air will do that. 11 degrees in Utkiavik, 18 in Nome, and teens and 20s for most of southwest. Bristol Bay, 30s and 40s with high temperatures tomorrow. Sub-zero for Fort Yukon and lower 30s to 40 in South Central. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
And on to aviation weather now. We'll have convection ongoing across the North Pacific as this large low moves across into the western Gulf. We do expect to see widespread IFR conditions across southeast. A large part of the northern Gulf Coast approaching Prince William Sound, the Kenai Fjords, the Barren Islands, and then Kodiak Island all the way out to the eastern chain expecting IFR through Privlovs up towards St. Matthew. And also we'll see a patch of IFR across the north slope with marginal conditions a lot more likely and more widespread there. But on the other side of things is a wide area of VFR across the interior and really a large part of southwest. That will change a little bit as we get into Wednesday afternoon. Widespread IFR conditions continue to work their way northward into the Copper River Valley through Prince William Sound, Kenai Fjords, and uh, just east of the Kenai Mountains itself, especially the summits there, into the Kodiak Island region, the central Aleutians, and points west, the Privalom stay under IFR with a very sharp changeover to marginal conditions and then VFR through the Bering Strait and the Chukchi Coast, including Kotzebue Sound and really uh, most of the Yukon Valley. As you get into Thursday morning, convection will continue to spread north and eastward into the central and eastern Gulf. IFR concerns will be more widespread across south central, including the Kenai Peninsula. We will see uh, likely an area of reduced, but not completely uh, down, areas around uh, the Anchorage Bowl, the Forelands onto the Susitna Valley, and uh, up toward about Tanita Pass there for uh, IFR concerns. North of that into the Alaska Range, west of that into southwestern Alaska. Marginal conditions will certainly be found, but you'll see that sharp transition again right over into Bristol Bay and parts of the central and eastern Aleutians. Uh, across the central and eastern and the upper parts of the Yukon Valley, looking for many areas in the interior to remain at VFR through Thursday morning. Uh, we'll see a morning start around uh, IFR across many north slope communities there away from the coast, but across the coastline itself, marginal conditions, maybe even VFR where you are. That IFR area will expand a little bit more on Thursday afternoon from about Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse all the way out to at least Atkusuk and maybe to Point Barrow and Utkiavik. Uh, Wainwright looking like IFR will be part of your morning and afternoon there. And then from Point Lay and or Point Hope northward, we expect to see marginal conditions into the Chukchi. IFR conditions will be found uh, from about Hooper Bay and Amonic all the way into Bristol Bay. Uh, likely across the Bering Sea coast of the Alaska Peninsula and again continuing across southeast with widespread convection again across the central and eastern Gulf. Here's your pass conditions in detail. Anaktuvik and Anagan Pass looking for a VFR start and an MVFR finish. Now further north of that we do expect to see IFR. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass looking for marginal conditions as we go. Rainy Pass to be VFR at least one more day. Windy Pass looking for VFR conditions there. VFR for Isabel Pass and Mentasta Pass leaning quickly over to IFR concerns as we go throughout your day. Tanita Pass, marginal conditions are developing throughout Wednesday. Portage Pass leans over fast to IFR throughout the afternoon. And then Chilkoot and White Pass looking like it'll be IFR for several days to come. Freezing levels again, this really tells the big story of where we're going to be for the next 24 to 48 hours. Here is your elevated warmth, two, four, six thousand foot lines there well north of the Kuskokwim and uh, pushing past the Yukon Valley. Here's your surface freezing line. So this entire zone here is overrunning. And that means that warm and wet air could condense and precipitate down into areas that have temperatures below freezing. That's not good. That's a freezing rain setup. And you'll see that boundary also exists here across parts of Anchorage, the southern Susitna, the Matanuska Valleys, and parts of the Kenai Peninsula. And it will be changing into the Copper River Valley as we go. So this is a freezing rain signature here. And across southeast, also looking for uh, some changes there with the surface freezing line down around Juneau and levels there about two to 4,000 feet above. Ice and potential certainly there. Right now we see the greater threats for considerable moderate elevated above six to 9,000 feet, but below 1,000 feet developing across parts of southwest. Freezing rain is in your forecast there, so take that seriously. The jet stream right now has a broad area of high pressure developing across the west coast and a high pressure system pushing down from the Arctic, low pressure here working its way in, and a broad southerly flow across the Gulf with faster speeds developing out ahead of that, 20 to 25 knots coming across the Gulf, 40 knots across southeast. A south uh, easterly wind becomes uh, more of a northeasterly flow, strengthening 40 to 50 knots coming off of the Arctic Ocean, and those offshore flows continue all the way across the west coast, 25 to as strong as 40 knots there across the west coast. At 3,000 feet, also moving pretty quick. Low pressure here south and west of Kodiak Island. Wind speeds between 20 and 50 knots, 60 knots north of the Brooks Range. And southerlies coming across the Gulf, also as strong as 60 knots. So there will be some turbulence concerns strengthening and increasing around the northern Gulf Coast below 6,000 feet. Some of that isolated severe along the coast and below 4,000 feet south of the Brooks Range across the interior.
Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills, where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills, where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. What is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Well, first, let's talk about what it's not. It's not a floating island of trash, like a garbage dump or a landfill. It's also not the only patch. They exist all throughout the ocean, and the Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous. 
Garbage patches are large areas of marine debris concentration that are formed by rotating ocean currents called gyres, kind of like big whirlpools that suck things in. A garbage patch is made up of tiny plastic pieces called microplastics that are less than five millimeters long. It's more like pepper flakes swirling in a soup than something you can skim off the surface. You might come across some larger items like plastic bottles, but it's possible to sail through a garbage patch and not see anything. And they're a big problem for the ocean and us. People often ask why we can't just scoop up all the marine debris in the ocean. And the answer is, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. The first challenge is the sheer size of these garbage patches. They're huge. They're constantly moving with ocean currents. And there's debris from the ocean surface all the way down to the sea floor. Not to mention all the marine life we would disrupt if we tried to just scoop up debris. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep trash out of the ocean in the first place. And we can participate in things like shoreline cleanups. It's a lot easier to deal with debris before it gets to the ocean. Because until we stop marine debris at the source, we'll just be cleaning it up forever. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with a look at your sea ice uh, edge, and you'll notice the higher concentrations here painted in white are creeping westward down the Beaufort Sea coast, still filling in with marginal ice west of Kaktovik, which is here, all the way out toward Ukiavik, and then around into the Kotzebue Sound region, where we're starting to see higher concentrations of ice across the upper end of Kotzebue Sound, not quite all the way out toward Shishmaref yet, but there is new ice forming across the region. And then we're starting to see some newer ice here across the upper end of uh, Norton Sound, and marginal ice forming across the Yukon and Kuskokwim deltas there and just east of Etolan Strait and up into some of the bays and passes. So good news there. You can always get the latest information at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. As we look at the weather in southeast, winds are coming up uh, quite a bit in the next day or so from the southeast as a hurricane forest low is on the western end of the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, 20 to 25 knot winds coming in from the south and southeast across the inside passage with 4 to 5 foot seas on the outer coast. 12 to 15 foot seas working in across the uh, outside as we work through your Wednesday with stronger winds and higher seas out in the Gulf. Then it'll become a little more southerly as we get into Thursday. In fact, a southwesterly shift here across the Dixon entrance and the outer coast south of Craig. As you look at the inside, winds coming in from the south and southeast will continue gust to 35 in Stevens Passage with 4 to 12 foot seas, the highest there around Clarence Strait for your Thursday. For south central east and northeasterly winds will rule the roost as we go into Wednesday for the outer coast. Now as you get into Prince William Sound, winds are expected from the northeast to 20 with a 4 foot sea, 5 to 10 foot seas developing across the central and southern parts of Cook Inlet, 20 to 35 knots, the highest of which will be outside of Resurrection Bay and across the Western Barrens as you get into your Wednesday afternoon for Thursday. That should diminish just a little bit more as the position of the low pressure system across the Western Gulf changes a little bit. Look for a southeasterly flow coming into the Hitchinbrook entrance area, north and Western Gulf into the Eastern Barrens, all running around 20 knots with 11 to 16 foot seas though. 17 foot seas as you head out toward Icy Cape and Cape Fairweather. And easterlies continue inside of Prince William Sound with a four foot sea on a 20 knot wind. For southwest, 30 knots at 7-foot seas for Bristol Bay. A little bit lighter winds there as you head down the coast. 20 to 35 knots across the north and western Gulf waters there into the North Pacific. 17 to 21-foot seas should be expected there with that 35-knot wind. 25 knots inside of Shelikov Strait with an 8-foot sea. That's coming in from the northeast, and that will pick up a little bit more as we head into Thursday with 30 knots and 8-foot seas there. Easterly is coming into Kodiak Island, 25 knots and 12-foot seas. And you'll starting to see that return flow coming in from the west with low pressure moving off to the east. So it's starting to pull in a little bit more of that northwesterly flow across the Alaska Peninsula. 25 knots there with 10 to 11 foot seas on Thursday. For the Aleutians, a north and westerly flow anywhere west of Nikolsky should be expected. 35 to 40 knot winds, 13 to 17 foot seas there across the Pacific coastal waters, anywhere from 8 to 15 foot seas 
across the west to central Bering Sea coast, where it is the highest of which will be between Adak and Nikolsky. North and easterly winds will still be found across the eastern chain, 25 to 30, 11 foot seas in the Bering, 16 across the North Pacific. Northern westerlies for the central and eastern chain there on Thursday. The higher winds and seas still out around the Pribilovs and across the west coast. Look for a west and northwesterly flow feeding in across the western chain. 20 knots there between Kiska and Adak with a 9 foot sea on Thursday afternoon. For the west coast, northeasterly winds coming out of Norton Sound to St. Lawrence Island, Nunavak Island, and uh, also St. Paul and St. George. Anywhere from uh, 40 knots there from Savunga to Macoria. You're looking at about 11 to 13 foot seas there, 8 foot seas. Inside of Norton Sound, a 40 knot wind out of Nome with uh, winds out of the northeast. That picks up even more on Thursday. 40 to 45, 9 foot seas inside of Norton Sound. And then across the west coast from St. Lawrence Island all the way down toward the Pribilovs, you're looking at as much as 15 to 17 foot seas, the highest of which will be north and west of Nunavak Island all the way out toward St. Lawrence Island. Kuskokwim Delta region is looking at 35 knots and 10 foot seas. For the Beaufort Sea Coast, we are starting to see some impacts on ice for the marine waters there. Uh, look for a northeasterly flow 15 to 20, 30 to 40 knots off the Chukchi Coast with 11 to 14 foot seas. And then on Thursday, northeasterlies 10 to 20 across the Beaufort and northeasterlies pick up 25 to 40 seas as high as 14 feet. Now here's a recap of tonight's weather. Winter storm warnings and advisories are plastered across the interior. A lot of those will start tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Wind will uh, blow 40 to 60 miles per hour in some cases, especially highway summits, and snow will accumulate. And that does include the Fairbanks area with the higher winds, of course, across some of the surrounding summits. A blizzard warning is in effect for the Thompson Pass area. Winter storm, uh, winter weather advisories for the Copper River Valley and a winter storm watch for Anchorage and the Matanuska Valley as we go forward. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.